Okay, so we're gonna start by showing you a little bit of a trick that you probably didn't learn in the Strengths 1 part of the course, and that's this little circle, and I'm just gonna put it in the top here, and we can refer to it as we draw the diagram, okay? So, if you wanna remember how to draw this, or just memorize it, it will be useful for you. Okay, so we have positive decreasing, negative increasing, negative decreasing, and positive increasing. Okay, so that means, it, what that essentially means is, depending on whether the shear force is increasing, decreasing, positive, or negative, we're going to, that's the, the shape of the circle is going to dictate the shape of the curve of the moment, okay? And if, you know, you get the, the shape of the moment wrong, the, the concave or convexity of the, the moment diagram, that's going to be wrong. Your, your professor will give you, take marks off for that. So this is going to help us with that. So let's get started. So taking a look over here, we have, um, we, we should usually draw this by the, uh, not necessarily by the free body diagram, but by the, uh, the original beam diagram, because depending on whether or not it's a distributed load, we're going to have to either draw a linear air increase or decrease or a straight line. Okay, so let's begin. Let's start at the origin here at the shear, okay? And the great part about this is it's quick and we don't need to write any equations out. I mean, we have to write a couple, but anyway, you'll see. So we're starting at A, okay? And we are going all the way over to B, all right? So we see that it, we have a distributed load acting downwards at 10 kilonewtons per meter for 10 meters, okay? So we're going to multiply 10 by 10, and we're gonna get 100, and that's down, so it's gonna be negative. So we know that we can come over to 10 meters, and guys, this is meters here. I've just written the kind of, as we go through the beam, how far we are. And that's as simple as that, okay? So we're gonna draw, because it's a distributed load, it's decreasing, all right? And we're going to draw a straight line, excuse me. There we go, perfect. All right, and that is, you guys are gonna wanna label your points just so we know where we are. Okay, and we are at 10 meters now, x equals 10 meters from the left, and we're at negative 100, and this is going to be in kilonewtons. Kilonewton meters. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, all we have to do is we have to look to see if there are any more external forces acting at point B, and it's a reaction, so there is. We have a reaction, as we saw before, of 252.73 kilonewtons going up. Okay, so up we have considered as our positive direction. That's just a general convention. Down is negative and up is positive. So what do we do here? We go to negative 100 and we simply add 252.73 to that, and whatever we get is where we're going to continue our shear diagram from, as simple as that. So we're gonna do 100 plus 252.73, and we're going to end up at 152.73, okay? Simple, right? Much easier than writing out all those equations and having to, you know, spend 30, 40 minutes on it. Okay, perfect. So, next we have, uh, we're starting from point B, we're moving over to point E, okay? Now, as we can see, there's a moment here, but the moment doesn't affect the shear diagram, it only affects the moment bending diagram. So we're gonna ignore that, and you know, other than that, there's no other external forces acting between B and C, so that's gonna be a constant line all the way to point C, okay? And it's the same value, it doesn't change. Negative 152.73, okay? And that's where these lines really come into handy, you guys. These, uh, these lines here that I've drawn, it, it, it helps you keep everything to scale. And uh, I'll show you a couple of reasons why that's important uh, shortly. Okay, so now this is, uh, not necessarily the, the tricky part, but this is about as tricky as it gets for the shear diagram, they're actually fairly easy, um, is we are going to now, sorry, why did I write negative here? That should be a positive. Sorry about that, guys. 
All right, so now we're at positive 152.73 kilonewtons, and from C to D, okay, what do we have? We have a distributed load acting downwards in the negative direction, okay? So what do we do? We multiply 40 kilonewtons per meter by the distance, which is 12, which is going to give us 480, okay? So that's a negative, obviously, right? Because it's acting down. And we're going to add that to the shear that we have here, which is positive because it's above the x-axis and it's 152.73, okay? And that's going to give us 327.27. Not exactly to scale, but that's okay. All right, and we're going to connect our line to that point straight across. And as a general check, obviously it has to go back to zero, otherwise the beam would be moving around and that's unacceptable. The moment and the bending diagrams always have to go back to zero. And as we can see, our reaction at D is 327.27 kilonewton meters, or sorry, kilonewtons. So that's going to take us up to zero, okay? And if you wanna make it look nice, we can draw some lines in here with these symbols. Like that, and that is the shear diagram. Next, we are going to draw the moment diagram. Uh, stay tuned to the next video for that.